welcome to all myself professor desh mukhemes going to present the practical sections of the subject dynamic op machinery having experiment number 4 with title to verify the natural frequency of torsional vibration of the two rotor systems and its position of nodes so what are the objectives of this experiment that is to study the effect of torsional vibrations at the natural frequency of the two rotor systems and uh, finding its uh, node positions uh, so what is the outcome of this experiment we have to understand the different natural frequency of the natural uh, the torsional vibrations of the two rotor systems and also its uh, uh, to understand what are the positions of the nodes some basic part that is introductory parts so what is my torsional vibrations the angular vibration of the the shaft about their axis uh, that is known as what torsion uh, what should be the effect of this torsional vibration on the shaft so it lead to failure of such atoms just like the your shaft couplings fans gears uh, engine dampers and also the the compressor um, oil pumps so this failure is typically occur in a 45 degree um, angle with this uh, shaft axis now this is a one one of the pictorial diagrams which shows the shaft is hinged at the one end and uh, another end that is a uh, being disc is attached when you are applying a particular torque over this disc it will get twisted with some angle theta about their main positions within at the time t and it having after releasing it it got the torsional vibrations now about the the damping is provided for this shaft again that is being uh, the over damp critical damp under damp and this undamp over damp that it returns to equilibrium positions without oscillations and what about the critical damping the it get the equilibrium with very quick uh, time without oscillations under damp situations so whatever the approval of this uh, the system to the original positions with some degradations of the amplitude and unknown situations it quite the uh, related to the natural resonance frequency omega 0 that we can say that unknown situations there is a no damping is provided this is particular graph that is uh, the being showing the different damping situations that is under damp uh, strong damping critically damp undamp the under damp situation shows that it goes to its uh, uh, original conditions with uh, the Uh, some degradation of amplitude the strong damping it shows the resistance to the motions means so the amplitude goes on decreasing and uh, some green line that is critical damp it quickly returns to its original conditions again undamped situations that is the being constant is amplitude means what there is no the resistance to the motions now some setup is there for this experiment that is being uh, the component that is the two rotors of the system stop was is there bearing pin is there having 6203 bearings bearing block for supporting purpose then again shaft hind 1.8 inch diameter shaft drill check rotor disc look at this is uh, the layout the uh, of all the setup that is been supported at the two side uh, the uh, the shaft having the bearings and having the two disc that is the rotor a and the rotor b having the mass which which is attached with some arms bearing block which shows to the support again from at the bottom level for the supporting purpose now what are the, the experimental procedures the fixed two disc to the shaft and the fit the shaft in the bearings deflect the disc in the opposite directions by hand and release then again note the particular oscillation the top practical now with the start the title title is to find out the natural frequency of torsional vibration of two rotor systems and find its node it's quite simpler at the start there is constructions now construction is here this is a rotor b this is a rotor a and which is connected by one so this is not having 3 mm diameter again this is a two arms that we are putting for rotor a 
having the different holes at the different radius. So this is R1, this is R2. Now in this case, these are the masses that we have to put at the place which will be provided here, that is R1 and R2. Again, what should be the variations? The variation is quite simpler one. The variation in the uh, masses that we are putting, that is three conditions at the start. We are having the no mass. Second case, look at here, that is the 400 grams mass we are putting at this R1 radius. Again, second condition, this is a 650 grams which is put it at the R2 radius. Hmm. Now, at the start, we have the first reading. Then, we have taken the first reading with the rotor A is constant and rotor A is a rotating with some two state angle. Now, in this case, we have to don't put the weight at the different radius. So, we can say that this reading will be taken at the zero weight. So, again, to straight with some angles, and after releasing, it will give some oscillation, and we have to take the time for the number of oscillation in seconds. Now this is the, the second reading where we are putting these masses at the R1 radius. So mass size is 400 grams at the both side. Now this is a rotor A, this is a rotor B. Now rotor B should be fixed one. So it will be fixed here. Now rotor B is twisted by this arm by putting this force at this arm. Again, we will get some oscillations in the directions. So when we are giving some angle directions, this will be having the oscillation just like here. Now in the third reading, uh, this 650 grams mass is putting at the both arms. So uh, look at the, this R2 radius. So at the initial that we can see the R1 radius, now this is the R2 radius where we are putting this mass at 650 gram on both sides. Now again, the same that is the R, that is the radius rotor B is constant and this rotor A is the two step, some of the angles here. They again after the reading, it will be having some oscillations. So look at these oscillations. Now, now we have to measure the time for these oscillations. There is five oscillations, what should be the time in seconds? So, this is the final one. Note the particular oscillations. They again fit the cross arm with the disc. Again, notes so down the time. Again, repeat the whole entire positions of the masses that is at the zero level, at the some R1 level, and R2 level. The second setup is showing here. Same. Now some observations that is required for the, the calculations purpose that is being disc A having diameter 224mm, disc B having 190mm, weight of disc 2.82kg and weight of disc B that is 2.01, weight of arm that is being attached the weight 1.5kg, length of arm 14cm, diameter of shaft that is 3mm, length between the two rotor system 97cm, Length of arm that is R2 is being the 180 mm and Maurer's of rigidity that is 0 0.8 tenders to 10 Newton per meter square. Now these are the observations that we got after the taking the, the practical readings. Uh, at the external side when we attach the weight, the oscillation is the 10 uh, with the, the required the time, I mean the reading which we have taken and the average is 5.3. 6 middle that is r is equal to 12.5 centimeter when we attach the weight with uh, the we are taking the 10 oscillations the reading we got 3.71 without weight we got the 2.87 average time uh, okay now these are some calculations that is inertia process that we have to calculate it for the disc a disc b then theoretical time 2 pi and the root i a into i b and k a into i a plus i b frequency that we have got with the same Again, same calculations with some different uh, the formulations just added to omega 1 into r1 square divided by 8 into 9.81 everything that is given to you reading we have taken and just put in the calculations we got the some results so this is result table r is equal to 18 that is the radius 
12.5 and 0. Under this time, they will get the T experiment 5.36 and 3.71 and 2.87. That F experiment that we got 0.8, 1865, 0.2695, 0.3484. Now, some conclusion that we are having at the end of this total experiment due to some instrumental and manual errors that exist in always. Uh, there is a difference between experimental and theoretical natural frequencies. Again, uh, the, when we uh, increase the mass, the natural frequency always changes. The length of cross arm goes on increasing, the natural frequency goes on decreasing. So, this is the three, the conclusion remark that we are being having. So, thanks for the watching.